Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt with The Movement System. Today we're going to be talking about protein recommendations for athletes. We're going to be going over the NSCA's recommendations for strength and speed athletes versus aerobic and endurance athletes and talking about how to calculate that given an athlete's body weight. And this is a definitely an important concept for the CSCS exam. We'll also compare that to the recommended dietary allowance and talk about if that's adequate for athletes. And then a little bit into the current research and what that's saying. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it. So it's really important to understand that the recommended dietary allowance of 0.8 grams per kilogram body weight per day, that is designed to keep us out of a deficit and is not adequate for athletes. So just to give you an idea, since this, this grams per kilogram body weight per day is a little bit hard to understand, I'm about 190 pounds, that's about 86 kilograms. So for me, the recommended dietary allowance is 0.8 grams times 86 kilograms, about 68.8 grams of protein per day. And 70 grams of protein is not a lot. If you think about one scoop of whey protein being about 25 grams, um, about a meal with like a chicken breast or two would be about 25 to 30 grams. You think 70 grams is really just the bare minimum, like three meals of 25 grams would be really the minimum. But for someone who's you know being active, this RDA is not gonna be enough to fuel you know, muscle hypertrophy and recovery. So that's why we have higher guidelines for athletes. So let's just say I'm a strength and speed athlete. So this might be something like a power lifter or a weight lifter or even like a, um, you know, a sport athlete that's gonna involve like power movements and whatnot, like a football player. So for this athlete, they're gonna want to use 1.4 to 1.7 grams per kilogram body weight per day. So again, using myself as an example, if I'm 86 kilograms, I can calculate the minimum and the maximum amount of protein for myself based on this guideline. So if I do the 86 kilograms times the 1.4, that would mean that I need to have at least 120.4 grams of protein per day. And then on the higher end, that 1.7 grams per kilogram per day times 86 would get me to 146.2 grams. So let's just say for an example question, if the NSCA was asking, you know, for a football player who weighs 86 kilograms and is consuming 100 grams of protein per day, should you, would you recommend that they increase, decrease, or maintain protein? Well, in this case, you would calculate that minimum and the maximum, and you would see that that's below what the recommended value is. Even though it's a little bit higher than the RDA, you would say that that athlete needs to increase to be within this range for the strength and speed athlete. So now when we think about aerobic or endurance athletes, the protein requirement is just a little bit less. Um, more so because they're gonna be higher in carbohydrates, so their carbohydrate requirement's gonna be a lot higher, but their protein is just a little bit lower. And on the lower end, 1.0, and on the higher end, for more intense or elite uh, endurance athletes, that 1.6 grams per kilogram. So again, using myself as an example, 86 kilogram athlete, if I'm on that lower end, it's gonna be 86 kilograms times one, gram per kilogram body weight per day would be a minimum of 86 grams of protein per day and a max of 137.6 grams. If uh, you know that I'm consuming, say, 110 grams, then I'm right in the middle of that, and if that, you know, I'm a cross-country runner or a triathlete or something like that, then you know that you just want to maintain protein in that situation. So you can see that both of these are, in comparison to the RDA, significantly higher. That 68.8 grams, again, is not gonna be sufficient for most people. That's just to avoid a protein deficit. Whereas uh, that 1.4 to 1.7 for strength and 1.0 to 1.6 for aerobic and endurance athletes is more optimal. That said, current research is pointing to a little bit higher than these current recommendations are. So specifically the research from Brad Schoenfeld and colleagues is pointing to along the lines of 2.0 to 2.2 grams per kilogram body weight to maximize muscle hypertrophy. Um, now, in, in we're still going to go with these guidelines when we're answering questions for the NSCA, but I just want you guys to know that that recommendation can definitely go on the higher end and they have not seen negative consequences with that in those studies. All right, so let's go ahead and do some examples here, guys. A female cross-country runner weighing 115 pounds is consuming 95 grams of protein per day. Do we recommend that she increase, decrease, or maintain? If you wanna pause the video and go ahead and try it, you can, and then we're gonna give it to you in a second. All 
All right, guys, so that 115 pounds, we're gonna convert that to kilograms by dividing by 2.2. We're gonna realize that that cross-country runner weighs 52 kilograms. That cross-country runner falls in the aerobic endurance athlete, so at the minimum, she's gonna to need to consume 52 grams. At the maximum, she's gonna to wanna to consume 83 grams of protein. So if we know that she's consuming 95 grams, that's a little bit higher than our recommendation here, and we're gonna recommend that she decrease her protein. All right, so another example here we're gonna go into, a male power lifter weighing 198 pounds is consuming 150 grams of protein per day. Do you re recommend that he increase, decrease, or maintain protein? So first step for that one, we're gonna calculate that a 198 pound power lifter is 90 kilograms, and that 90 kilograms we're gonna put into this strength and speed athlete range. So at the minimum side, 1.4 times that 90 kilograms is going to get us 126 grams of protein per day. On the maximum end, that 90 kilograms times 1.7 is going to get us 153 grams of protein per day. If he's currently consuming 150 grams, he's on the higher end, but he's within that range and we're going to have him maintain protein. All right, guys, so I hope this was helpful for you in understanding the recommended protein intake for athletes. If it was, go ahead and hit the like button and maybe leave a comment below. If you want to watch more videos like this that help you prepare for the CSCS exam, you can subscribe to this channel and click the link in the description below to join the Strength and Conditioning Study Group where we go over long-form Facebook Lives and post practice questions each week for the CSCS test. All right, guys. Thanks, and we'll catch you in the next one.